Hi, it's Jennifer. And today I'm going to be using the renewal kit from Softlex Company. It was uh, maybe a couple months ago, a month or so ago. And I'm just uh, digging into all my little kits to put everything together here. And I, the first thing I do when I get my kit, it comes and uh, it arrives and I will open it up and see what all the components are, see what the bead mixes are, and then I'll you know, separate them out. So I have you know, some of these, I have the greens here, I have the tans down here, and the blues. Then what I do is I take some of the components and I start putting things together how I'm, how I'm wanting to use them. So I have a necklace and earring set over here that I have an idea for. But then I'm going to use these beads here with the exception of these because these are a little bit smaller. These here have a little bit of a smaller hole and so I'm not going to be able to get the uh, leather through it. So yes, I'm going to be making another leather bracelet and going to use the beautiful leather knots or uh, barrel knots that I uh, demonstrated in another video and that I learned from Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So these other, you know, this strand, what a beautiful strand. This didn't come in the kit, but a Softlex Company works with Jesse James Beads and has uh, and offers up these strands. So this one is the renewal strand, and this is a renewal kit. So in the kit, I believe, um, I believe all of this came in the kit here, along with some head pins, a lobster clasp, some jump rings, and ear wires. I love their ear wires. And some of their two by two crimp tubes that I really like using. There's, they're real, they're real thick and they are seamless. And when you use them with the magic crimper, then you don't, really don't even need a crimp cover because when you um, when you start crimping, it all it forms a bead. So um, it's actually pretty cool. It's magical. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these strands off to the side here so that I have a good working mat here because all we're going to use for this project, and then I'm going to flip this around. I'm gonna flip this around and have this here. So I have one of these yummy bamboo, I believe it's bamboo, uh, uh, tiara cast bamboo button. And this is in the antique gold, so not bronze. It has more of a shiny gold finish. And I'm gonna use this button along with some 0.5 millimeter leather cording that I got, and I'm not sure where I got this from, but I have about 60 inches, and I know that that is way too much, but when you're making barrel knots, it's always nice to have more than not enough because uh, you need that extra length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 60 inches here, and I'm going to find the middle. And we'll see if I have scissors. I do have scissors. It's funny, I learned everything I know about jewelry, I learned from Kelly Sutton at Kelly's Bee Boutique. And scissors seems to be always the thing that she'll say, oh, I, I remembered my scissors this time. Oh, I remembered my scissors or, oh, I forgot my scissors. And apparently I picked up on that habit too. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these two side by side here and I am going to find the middle again. And just place my finger there and I'm going to go ahead and thread on my button. So this is gonna be the same style as what I have done before but I'm using, I'm gonna have four strands here. So I am all about stacking bracelets. I have a few bracelets here, have a few bracelets here, and I'm all about stacking them. But isn't it nice when you can grab one bracelet and have several strands? And so I'm pretty excited about 
um, making this up. And so we'll have a stack bracelet within a bracelet, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure it's been made before, so I'm not coining any sort of phrase and I'm not creating some sort of um, bracelet that's never been done before, but it's new to me. So if it's new to me, then it's gonna be new to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this. I do not have my barrel knot tube. And these barrel knot tubes are, is, it's a tool that Kelly uses. She has them on her website. However, if you were to order a kit, that it, the process of putting the kit together involves a barrel knot, she always tosses one in. So I do have quite a few because I've ordered, I don't know, I've stopped keeping track of the number of kits that I've ordered from her. But her kits come in little bags like this, and this kit doesn't have a barrel knot but um, or barrel tube, uh, but this was the first thing that I could grab. And so she'll have what the kit is, the link for the YouTube, and then all the goodies that go into, all of the goodies that go into um, making the kit, putting the kit together. So with the barrel knot, so what I'm going to do is um, I have these four strands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap one strand around all four or around the remaining three so that we can get this button locked in. But I'm only going to tighten it up to about here so there's some wiggle room so that we have some room. You don't want it all tight and have it just so stiff that it can't move. And this leather here, it's a tan and it has um, a metallic shimmer to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my barrel knot tube and just place that in the middle there. And I'm gonna grab the, I'm going to grab the, the strand that is furthest away. There we go. So we're gonna go right here. And then I am going to, this is my first attempt at so many strands, trying to barrel knot with so many different strands. So we're gonna go one, two, three times around. And as I am wrapping around the tube, I am working away from me, because it's easier, and then towards the button. So that when, and I always keep my fingers in place here and keep that uh, little wrap intact. I'm gonna send this strand back through, and I don't know if it's easier to uh, pull on the tube at the end or in the beginning. Um, for me, it's just kind of hit and miss how I, uh, when I uh, remove that uh, tube. So then you're gonna use the strand, the strand that, and it's so hard to show because you have to keep you have to keep your hands on the, you have to keep your fingers on the, um, on the little wrap here because you need to keep all those strand, all those wraps intact. So then you just start pulling away to tighten. And again, this is 0.5 millimeter. So if Kelly were to watch this, I would hope that she'd be pretty impressed that I took a 0.5 millimeter because poor Kelly had to hear me whine and cry how I couldn't get. And so I'm just pushing this through. Obviously she does it a lot better than I do. She has a little bit more, um, uh, she has a lot more skill. And so now I'm gonna, you know, I do wanna keep some, I do wanna keep some um, slack there and I am going to just tighten it. And I'm not gonna tighten it too much because this is 0.5. And um, and then I don't want that knot, I don't want it to be hidden because I kind of like these knots. So I want them to be seen. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stranding. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, start with two. We'll put those two off to the side and I'm gonna start stringing. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna string, let's, Put a little thin one here. So I'm gonna string, I'm gonna string one here. Then I'm gonna mix it up and put a couple different colors over on the other side. So let's go ahead and do this. And 
pull those together and just kind of, I don't want them tight in there because I want it to free float. And so I'm thinking I'm going to put the, the, the knot about right here, both this. So you want to work with a longer strand on top, the longer piece. So happens that this one is longer than the other because you're using that longer piece to wrap. So you're using more of that longer piece. Eventually all pieces will be about the same size and length. You would think, you would hope, but I don't think it matters because you're going to trim it at the end anyways. So I have one, so I'm going to grab the one in the back and I'm going to start wrapping. And when I wrap, I'm going to keep my wraps intact. I am going to pass this through. I'm always working towards my other hand here. Pass this through. And voila, we have our knot. So now I'm going to start. I want to keep, you have to keep them all in line. You don't want them to bunch up. And I just want to see where I want my knot to end up. And there we go. And if things get where they're not tight enough, you can just keep on squeezing here. Oh, I like that. I really do. I like that. And so I'm going to pull, but I'm not going to pull too hard. I'm using my fingernail to kind of tighten it up too. And um, there we go. We have one strand and that should be about maybe an inch, hopefully. It's a little bit more than an inch because I was thinking, okay, I'll do six and then have, um, and then have um, the button length as well as the loop we're gonna put on the end. So I was thinking I would have six passes to do through here. And so, um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and make like a seven inch bracelet. Now, I have a large wrist. So my wrist is about seven and a quarter, somewhere around there. So a lot of the bracelets that I make, I make it my size because they're my size, right? And so um, if anybody were to ever walk into my front room here where I have all my jewelry, I have a basically a jewelry store in this front room, you know, bracelets, not all of them are gonna, not all of them are gonna fit because I have a larger wrist. All right, so now let's go with a different color. So let's go with, um, now let's go with, let's go with these nice sparkly. So I don't think I'm gonna use these in another project. So let's go here. And I want to use some of these here because we're not going to follow some color scheme. We're just going to do our own thing. And I love these blues and creams and greens all together. And so it just adds pretty good balance there. All right, so now I want to find where's my longer. My longer one is on top again. Boy, Kelly would be so proud. Okay. So, I mean, I hope she would. I'm just one of her thousands of students. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and wrap again. And go ahead and pass through. I'm thinking the reason why you would not want to, um, why you would maybe not want to remove the uh, barrel so late in the game is so that you have wiggle worm if you need to pull, if you need to adjust your, um, where your knot's gonna land. I just thought of that, which I'm sure she probably mentioned at some point. And looks like I only have two. So I'm glad I did this. I didn't sing the once, twice, three times. She'll sing that song while she's, she'll say that it reminds her when she's doing her little barrel knots. She'll say, once, twice, three times. It's like the song. 
and I did not, I did not sing the song. So here we go. We're going to put this barrel back in the barrel tube. I can get it in there. And so now I'm going to grab this back one and go one, two, three. There we go. I apologize if I went off camera. I really do appreciate the people that make videos, especially the live ones. Ooh, live ones. At least with these, when I mess up, I can go back. So I'm going to bring this knot way down because I have it way too far up. Um, I really do appreciate the live videos because at least with these, I can go back and edit and and um, remove what I don't want and add what I want. And uh, with live videos, you can't do that. Okay, so get that all nice and tight. All right, so now let's just, oh boy, that got a little wonky, didn't it? There it goes. Okay, I just need to get it tightened up just a little bit more. There we go. No, it did get a little wonky. So I had a little mishap. And so now what I've done, you'll see now there's lots of shadows because I couldn't see. Uh, the lighting in this room at this time of the day is really bad. And so I turn off all the lights so there's no shadows and that was just not working for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this barrel knot again once, twice, three times. This is the last one I'll show and then I'm gonna go off camera and finish it off because I do want to uh, make a couple more things here and would like to not have a long, a long, such a long uh, video um, with just one item. I would like to have maybe a couple. I don't know. Maybe the long videos of it all the way through is good because then you hear you hear our little stories. I love the stories. The stories are awesome. All right, so I'm going to continue going through. I'm using the blues and the creams and the greens. I'm not gonna be using any of these components here. So, uh, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off. So Jennifer got a little too bossy with the leather and I had to do a little quick repair. So yes, you see my super new glue out. Have a little component added here. Thank goodness I had these Hammer Tone um, crimp. They're crimp beads, but they're large. I got them from Kelly's Bead Boutique and I just, all I did was, um, put a little bit of glue on the inside, inserted the broken one, which I think this is the broken side. I just got two um, overzealous when I was putting one of my, uh, when I was doing this wrap right here. So I thought I would do that. And then I'm gonna just try and get these as even as possible. So I'm gonna come out just a little bit here. So after I was thinking about how I'm gonna tie this all off, I decided to undo the last barrel knots that I put on the ends because I'm just going to do one large one to uh, bring together the two strands. So again, this is, even though this isn't a live, this is designing on the fly and making changes. And since this is a small, um, a, you know, it's a 0.5 millimeter leather, I, and then also after my mishap where I pulled a little too tightly on my others, on my other strand, I did not have these too tight so that I can untie them. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do here is that I am going to, so I don't have a bunch of barrel knots. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all four together like this 
find my longest strand, which here's my longest strand here. So I'm just gonna do a little flipperoo here. Like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring them together. Let's do that, make sure we have them at least in some sort of line, which I'm not sure you can see what I was just doing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same where I'm gonna grab the last one furthest away from me, and wrap around all of the uh, strands. So once, twice, three times, and then I'm gonna pass it through. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull on the tube early because I want to be able to adjust, you know, where my, where my uh, knot is gonna land and see that one kind of got in front there. You don't want to cross them, but then also too, I want to push this closer down to the base here. And so that's why you would pull on your tube a little bit, um, you know, in the beginning so that you have more where you can adjust your, your knot a little bit better closer to the base. And if these here get a little catty, you know, if they get where they're a little bit longer, you can always um, pull on the, these other strands here. So you can just kind of pull on them and bring them a little bit closer. And I, that is just so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? And so now I'm gonna keep on pulling here and pulling here. And I don't want it to get... And so as I'm pulling on these other strings here, I can bring them in a little bit closer too. I'm wanting this to be, I'm needing my knot to be probably about right there. I don't want it to be a tight fit because I don't want to put a lot of stress on the, um, there goes my neighbor with the old uh, lawnmower right when we're trying to finish camera. You have to keep all that in mind, all the extra passes. And I was going to, I was initially going to do two wraps in between, but I love these barrel knots. So I was gonna do two and then I ended up doing three. So here we go, pass through, and I do want it to be a little bit tighter of a, of a clasp in there. And we're gonna go a little bit more. Again, I don't wanna put a lot of stress on these strands here, but there's, four in there, so that's good. All right, so let's go just a little bit, just a smudge more. And we will use, um, I won't do it on, on camera. Well, I might, but I do want to use some Super New Glue or some GS Hypo just to hold those knots in together. So now we have this fandy dandy tail. And what can we do with this tail? Well, we can go ahead and um, you can just snip it off and only have this here. You can keep the tail and add some, you know, because we do have some length here. So I might add a couple of these little guys. Maybe add one to each strand, maybe just to add a little bit. And then let's go ahead and grab our barrel knot tube and go once, let's go twice. And then you can add a little bit of um, decor. Plus I have all these extra beads and I mean, of course I will use them, but um, you have extra beads. Let's bring it a little bit closer and we can do longer, we can stagger them. And so with this, I'm just going to, I'm just kind of pushing and pulling. So I'm pushing with one side and pulling with the other. Again, not trying not to do too much because, well, I guess if it breaks on this side, I'm good. 
All right, so there's one. So let's go ahead and let's do something like this. We'll keep that close to the top too. Again, just a little bit of on the fly. I'm just way off on my camera. I'm so sorry. Once, twice. I'm only passing through twice, so you won't hear me sing three times, the lady. Three times a loop or three times a wrap. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to push and pull and make sure I don't cross them again like I just did, but I fixed it. Again, this is so tiny, but I do like it. I, you know, if Kelly would have asked me a year ago and said, hey, why don't you try using some 0.5, which I think I might have used 0.5 in one of her kits. I would have said, no way, no way. Okay, so I made that longer, which is good. That's fine. Now, what we'll do is, I'll just be sure to make this one shorter. And so we will just put one. I'm just gonna make sure to be way up here at the top. Way up here at the top. So one. Two and pass through. One, two, and pass through. There we go. All right. And again, I'm just always keeping my fingers up on this knot. And we want it to be way close to the top. So we are going to really bring this up to the top. I don't know if my fat fingers are in your guys' way. Bring it more closer and just push and pull and push and pull. All right. Then we will do another one of these guys. Wow, did that work out perfectly? Because I know that I want to use these and another piece with this, with some bead caps. So that works out nicely. And then let's just see how this all, let's have this go down just a little bit. About right there. So once, twice. Are through. Get pulling. And again, it is a little difficult when it gets down to the end, but you know, if you just push and pull and push and pull, let's see, where was I wanting it to go? Yep, that works out. So then I'm just going to start pushing and pulling here using my thumbnails. I knew having thumbnails would come in handy. Okay, so let's just go ahead and give that a little snip. Give that a little snip. And what I'm probably gonna do is I'll come in and add some super new glue. And there we have it. Using the Soft Flex Renewal Kit, as well as uh, some Tierra Cast components, you know, that one to fix my mess up. And I might go in and add maybe a charm or do something a little different there. But here is a nice bracelet. Will never fit me, but it will fit somebody <laughs> in my family. And just a nice little floating stackable bracelet.